Welcome aboard again, Mary. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yes, well, much, much has happened in the intervening time. Yes, it has. Thought I'd uh, just bring you up to speed. The other guys will visit at the moment, so uh, pay attention. Okay. The uh, Moonkin. The Moonkin has been fit with uh, Spaces Lock because it's been epoxied in place. And they've been fitted, and the deck has been drilled. Oh, yes. Yes, it has. One coat of penetrating epoxy has been applied to this particular boomkin beam. The other one awaits its turn. The Valspirit platforms have been glassed and sanded. A very good thing. Yes, indeed. And work has commenced on the bowsprit. Oh, yeah. Take a look at this. Uh, oh, you might be wondering what these air uh, devices are for. They're not really cannons for a broadside, boom, no, no, clamps, clamps, you see, I'll explain it to you, just bear with me here, be patient, while I take these things off, all right then, all right, steady, get your knickers in a twist, bah, bah, bah. okay, this is looking really good, this is, you see, the boom can here, I mean, uh, boom can. You see, the outfit here is five inches across. But way down here, it's only four inches across. So, what's the big deal? Well, let me tell you. The outfit platform, the outfit platform, it's going to sit like so on the valve strip. However, stainless steel fittings have been drilled and designed with a four inch space between the two pieces. So if we have five inches down here and four inches up there, the valve strip pulpit and other hardware will not fit. So we had to router the edge of the valve strip make the four inch width consistent all the way down. Yes, we did. But it's not deep enough to screw the bus platform on. So solution to the problem. That's right. We're going to scab on a bit on the outside, like so. Epoxy it in place, and it will provide a little edge for the platform. <laughs> so we got one side done. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And it worked out just the way it was designed to. like that. That's what the clamps are on there for. Hold the piece in place while the epoxy cured. So it's been nice to be sanded. We'll have to sand it again where the epoxy kind of leaked over a bit. What I'm talking about. It'll have to be sanded again where the epoxy leaked over. But other than that, perfect. Perfect. Perfect right there. Nothing of beauty. Anyway. I'll let the other guy uh, carry on and do all the uh, grunt work. I'm going to go have myself a libation, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and in the meantime, uh, yeah, carry on, carry on. So as the Dread Pirate was saying, the uh, bowsprit platform had a little ledge uh, attached to the bowsprit. I'll have to sand it down a bit and then uh, put some penetrating epoxy on it. Um, but tonight I'm going to do the other side of the bowsprit. If I get that done, I will probably put some epoxy, penetrating epoxy on the boomkin pieces. They are pretty much done. All I need to do with them is um, penetrating epoxy them and then resin them. I'm going to put resin over top of that and then uh, seat all over top of that. And they can be mounted back on the boat. So that'll be the first major piece that's ready to go back on the boat. Um, the Samson posts need to go back in, and I haven't treated them yet, so I'll probably do that too. Uh...
Well, I decided to have a little bit of fun while I'm waiting for my penetrating epoxy to set up. You're supposed to mix it and let it sit for 15 minutes before applying it. So I've got 15 minutes to kill. Uh, so I thought, well, I've got the new bowsprit pretty much configured. So I don't need to keep the old one. So I took a moment to cut it apart. And I was kind of impressed. This uh, piece of wood has been sitting in the shed here for just about a year now. It's still wet. And uh, not only is it wet, but I made another amazing discovery. The original Douglas fir was also full of worms. And it's, uh, it's still spongy. <laughs> so I'm not sure how this piece of sponge lasted as long as it did. But today's the day it goes bye-bye, never to be seen again. And uh, the new bowsprit will take its place. This is one of the inner boards and you can see how uh, some creatures gotten in there and chewed it up. But I'm kind of intrigued. This is not this is not Douglas fir. It almost looks like teak. But if it was teak, it wouldn't look like that, would it? Oh well, it's garbage. With all the woodwork going on, it's uh, time to revisit the Samson Post project. The Samson posts were cut, shaped, and fit, and then I got busy doing other projects, and the Samson posts just kind of got put away and left. So today what I want to do is to mark the Samson posts where they go through the deck. The reason for that is I want to put some glass right around where the, uh, the deck butts up against the Samson posts. The previous Samson posts, you could see that they had... Um, worked a little bit. It moved and rubbed and the wood had um, worn away a bit. And I suppose that's a compounding effect, right? The more it wears, the more play there is in the Samson post. So the more movement there is and the more it wears and so on. So I'm going to prevent that by laying in a little bit of glass and embed it into the, into the post just around the, just where the deck is. And the rest will remain raw wood. Well, I'll treat it with epoxy, penetrating epoxy. But I'm actually going to put some matte or glass glass in there. And I'll be back tomorrow. In the meantime, fair winds, following seas, and God bless.